Jonathan from Greece. All right, okay. Uh, all right, uh, so let me introduce Dr. Aristotelodimus, a fellow plastic surgeon from uh, Greece. Uh, today, uh, it's thankful to him despite it's a busy day for him, a surgery day, and he still takes time off uh, to share his um, experience in, in introducing the uh, SEL, stroma and rich lipograph technique for fat transfer and facial, facial breast lipo filling. All right. So with that, uh, I shall stop my screen. And uh, we'll let uh, Dr. Aristimus share his screen. Okay, Aris, here you go. Thank you, my friend. It's it's a great pleasure to be with all of you. Um, it's a fantastic uh, event, the FATS, and hope all of you, you can join us in uh, uh, in our meeting that uh, Eddie and the whole team FATS is putting in uh, uh, Bangkok. And uh, by that, let me just uh, uh, introduce myself. I'm the head of Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery Department at Metropolitan General Hospital, and I'm the scientific director of HealthSpot HHG uh, here in Athens, Greece. We have uh, clinics in uh, uh, various place here in Greece and also around the world. And, uh, you know, all this started when two of the giants of the modern plastic surgery, Ivo Pitangi and Yves Gerard de Luz, uh, gave me the opportunity uh, to be who I am today. Yves Gerard de Luz was the guy who introduced and popularized uh, the liposuction because we're talking about stromerous lipographs. So we are talking about collecting fat and giving back to the body. So face, breast, um, and, and body. And Ivo Pitangi was the father of the modern aesthetic plastic surgery based in Brazil. Unfortunately, both of them, they are diseased, but I think this is uh, a great tribute to pay to these giants uh, for where we are standing and I personally stand today. So a little bit of the history. Uh, this is uh, the last 20, 21 years. We started back in 2003 because I couldn't find a good way for my fat to survive. So I was doing fat crafting back in Brazil and the results were awful. So I said, you know, let's go and check, look why we're not getting good results. So um, we did the first case uh, in 2007. It was published actually in the Aesthetic uh, Plastic Surgery Journal. Uh, in 2008, we did the first case of face cell, and I'll explain you what exactly is the cell in, in, in a moment. Most of you, uh, obviously, you have read uh, some of the more than 75 um, uh, journal articles and more than 35 book chapters that we have written. Also, in 2011 came the Adequate Stem Cells and Regenerative Medicine book, which is called the Bible of the Adequate Stem Cells for Regenerative Medicine. It was uh, published together with Yves Gerard de Luz, and it was prefaced by Ivo Pitangi. And up to today, we have done more than 3,650 cases. I believe it's the biggest number in the world um, uh, using these techniques. And this is for the face, breast, and body, obviously. So a little bit about the uh, research and publishing, because uh, without research and publish, you know, nobody can state what we are saying. So we have 72 peer-reviewed articles, 41 book chapters, more than 635 lectures and webinars, and there have been done 555 live surgical demonstration. I believe this is the biggest number in the world. I have operated in more than 35 countries, and obviously we're gonna do a very nice um, cadaver uh, workshop for the face and breast uh, with uh, FATS uh, organization in June in um, Bangkok. This is the book it has been translated also in Chinese, uh, it's one of the best-selling books uh, for 2019. It has been sold more than 275,000 chapter downloads and more than 75,000 actual uh, a book uh, uh, sold in, in the last uh, 10 years. A little bit about our geographics. We get patients from all over the world. 53% uh, obviously it's from Europe, United Kingdom, uh, United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, and Qatar. 
We get 5% from Australia and New Zealand, 6% from China and India, 23% of Brazil, Argentina, Colombia, and Chile, and the rest from the United States of America, Canada, and uh, Mexico. 70% they are female, obviously, 30% they are um, males. The age range is between 18 and 90 years old. And you can see these are part of our life surgeries. There is, there is IMCAS. Uh, the, last, the last one we did, it had more than 2,500 participants seeing the life surgery, actually uh, performed by, uh, by myself and my wife, uh, Dr. Beatriz Nicareta, who is a Brazilian plastic surgeon, obviously, uh, sees part of this whole um, uh, you know, uh, training, part of this whole running the show. There are more than 15 plastic surgeons working with us all over the world in order to deliver this kind of results. This is from Aesthetic Istanbul, a very successful event that we have been organizing in the last uh, uh, 10 years together with uh, my dear friend, Dr. Bulensi Handimur. And you can see some of these pictures. Uh, again, other, other events, webinars, all over the places. Uh, and I think this is very important because uh, this proves how important is this technique and how uh, we have widespread all over the world. And, and we are very, very honored to be invited uh, uh, for this kind of educational programs. The American Society of Plastic Surgery gave us the opportunity, the Japanese Society, um, the ISEPS, and, uh, and obviously the MWC. Now, let, let me just go to the uh, basics, how we are doing that. So I have a tailor-made approach for the face. So I do the forehead lifting. I don't do any more endoscopic or open forehead lifting. I use technology. I think emerging technology is very important for people that they deny that technology can work and technology is advancing. Obviously, they live in an era of like 15, 20 years ago. So uh, I use every possible technology that works uh, for me in order to deliver the results you're going to see. If I need to do an upper and lower breath, I will do it. I do Sometimes deep plane lifting, it's the new hot spot for all the plastic surgeons, but there are some times that you don't need the deep plane physics lifting and you're gonna do a smash plication, for example. And obviously I do the fat grafting the cell. So you can see how my patient looks on the table. This is after five minutes of treating one side. So you can see the red dot is the treated side. The blue dot is the non-treated side. And this is just by one little nick. Hopefully we're gonna have uh, the Renewable participating also in our cadaver workshop in Bangkok. So we're going to show you in person how you can do that. It's a very easy procedure. Uh, you don't need to be a NASA um, a specialist. It, it, it just takes about five to 10 minutes to treat a side. And the results are long lasting. Now, blepharoplasty upper and lower. This is how the uh, face lifting looks before I enter in the deep face, uh, in the deep space, and you can see the deep plane, I would say better, and obviously uh, applying the Renewvian for the neck. And this is my MAFT gun. It, it's it's a, a, a very nice um, a device used uh, uh, by Taiwanese, uh, a doctor, a friend of mine, uh, and we, we are doing the fat grafting using that. Now let's go, what's stromal risk lipograph? Most of the people, they, they, they already know that, but I'll, I'll just walk you through. So I'm taking the fat out and instead of washing, decantating, centrifugating and giving back to the patient, the, your results are gonna be, you know, about 20 up to 40% of fat grafts of our, we are dividing in three parts. So one third of the part goes for saline purification. In other words, we're washing the fat because we want the clean fat to be as the base that we're gonna be supercharging with the adipose derived stem cells. How are we getting the adipose derived stem cells? The adipose derived stem cells, we're getting it by collagenation digestion. So this is the gold standard. I'll show you the mechanical digestion also, mechanical separation that is very famous now. It's, uh, you know, gaining, um, uh, you know, popularity, but the gold standard still is the collagenase digestion. So we're doing collagenase digestion, centrifugation, we're getting the adipose derived stem cells out and we are mixing with the rest of the fat. Now, many people are asking me, why are we having the 15, 20, 25% of fat graft survival? You're having it because the fat graft, even if you do nothing, it has some stem cells. Now, if you're overcharging, if you're putting more stem cells there, adipose derived stem cells or mesenchymal stem cells, obviously you are increasing your chances 
of your five graph survivor. And that's what we're doing. Now let's go a little bit about the mechanical uh, separation. Uh, there are different kind of uh, you know, products out there. Uh, there is T-Lab, there is adenizers, there is LipoCube, there is everything. This particular is uh, the LipoCube. And I'll tell you why I'm using LipoCube because this is particular for SVF. I haven't found any other uh, product that can separate the stromal vascular fraction. So this goes through several filtrations that breaks down separating the fat from the adipose derived stem cells. And obviously you need centrifugation at the end in order to get the SVF and the SVF. These are two different products and I'll go in details how we're doing that. So you can see this is a very easy procedure. Usually my scrub nurses are doing that. Well, I'm doing a phase lifting while I'm putting an implant in, well, I'm doing you know, an abdominoplasty. And you know, it goes, takes about 15 to 20 minutes. And then obviously when you have done this serial uh, filtrations, you go in the lipocube uh, centrifugation, going through, spinning this up so you can get this tiny bit of SVF, which is about three to four ml in its side. You can see you take the fat out, you go back and forth now, and this is the special pellet there you are going to have, which is ready for injection. Now, let's go for the gold standard, and this is uh, also uh, uh, the the other white life cube. This is uh, specifically to prepare different emulsification products that you are going to be using for your face, and th that's milli, micro, and nanofat. More, more, most of the people they say, uh, what what are these things? This or you know whoever does fat grafting to the face, it, it's not anymore about taking the fat, you know, washing or uh, centrifugating and giving back to the patient. So you have to go through different procedures of emulsification. You need different products and I'll show you why, because we're gonna be injecting these different products in the whole phase. Uh, so this is how it produced the nano, micro, micro and milli. And once you have produced that, uh, let's say you're uh, ready and uh, uh, you want to uh, inject them, we have, this is, and you can take up obviously a screenshot of that, uh, these are the different products, the milli, micro, and nanofat, and where we are putting these products. So the milli goes deep in the bone because we want to give structure, we want to give volume. The micro goes more superficial above the SMAS uh, plane, and the nanofat is goes subdermal, intradermal, and topical. And uh, you can see we can apply basically the whole face, all these procedures. And I think... This is, this is really important when you're doing your uh, fat grafting. Now, let me just tell you how the deep plane phase lifting, because it's, it's the new for plastic surgeons, it's the new hype. And I'll, I'll show you a little bit of schematic representation because it's gonna be easier. And you can see the different parts of the SMAS. There is a mobile SMAS, which is distal, and there is a proximal SMAS, which is more rigid. So most people that they are trying to get on the uh, rigid SMAS, uh, they are not gonna have long lasting effects because the application they are gonna do is not gonna last. Once you're getting to the deep face, uh, to the deep plane uh, 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 lift, you are getting and you're mobilizing all, releasing all the osseocutaneous ligaments. And you can see how we're doing. And this is where exactly the mobile and the fixed SMAS is there. And uh, when we're entering the deep plane, we want to release all this part uh, distal, medial to the face and also to the neck. You're gonna see in a Y, uh, uh, you see the preorbicularis mid phase dissection. Uh, obviously you have to be very careful because there are nerves uh, running there. So this is the dissection of the osseocutaneous ligaments. We had to cut this ligament in order to mobilize uh, the distal, uh, the medial part of the face. And obviously when you're entering in the neck, you have to do the uh, lateral plasmal, uh, platysmal dissection. There are ligaments also there. You have to release that. You have to go, go uh, uh, and do a, a nice, a nice release. This is the cervical relating uh, ligament, as you can see there. So once you receive, uh, uh, you release that, this is gonna be a great, uh, you know, mobilization of the whole process. Obviously in the cadaver uh, course we're gonna do in Bangkok, for the face, we're gonna concentrate more on the facial fat grafting. So I'll show you where exactly we're gonna put the fat deep, more superficially, we're gonna produce different kinds of uh, 
uh, you know, layers, and you're going to have a hands-on experience to play around with the fat and see when we open the face where exactly the fat is. Uh, and obviously, I'll, I'll show you all these deep structures because it's it's nice to see, especially if you're a plastic surgeon, uh, not only when you have done your fat grafting, but uh, what you can do in order to have an enter in the deep uh, plane of face lifting. Uh, for non-plastic surgeons, uh, we're going to concentrate more on the fat grafting. We're going to concentrate on the milli, uh, nano, and uh, micro uh, fat grafting. And we are going to inject it uh, to the cadaver in order to see exactly uh, 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 what we can achieve with this kind of products. So uh, having said that and finishing with uh, the face lifting, uh, most of the people, they're going to ask me, okay, so what are we doing with the fat grafting? I always do my face lifting first and then I do my fat grafting. This is a very nice uh, instructional video and we're going to present it obviously uh, also in the cadaver uh, uh, workshop in Bangkok, and you can see I'm using now my melee fat. My melee fat is the original fat I'm getting out without processing, without going through any process, and I'm going deep to the bone, giving structure, giving uh, uh, you know projection to the face, and I'm using it next to the bone because I want. And you can see now there are different uh, approaches. I can put it even in the deep structures, in the nose, in the upper lip, uh, but. Bear in mind that this is raw fat that you need to go deep. Now, the micro fat injections, you go more superficially and usually you put it above this mask, like I showed you before uh, in the uh, uh, different kind of structure of fat grafting we're doing and where exactly we're uh, putting it. And you see, we're blending the whole face. That's the beauty of fat grafting. We're not giving structural fat grafting only, but we are doing regenerative plastic surgery. We are trying to reverse the signs of aging. We have found that the milli and the nanofat contains all these structures, all these growth factors, all these adipose derived stem cells that can play a huge role in the rejuvenation, in reversing the signs of aging for the face. And finally, we're doing the nanofat. You can do the sniff, which is the little needle speaks in uh, intradermally or using the roller and you can do the whole uh, uh, face obviously it takes about uh, 45 minutes to do the whole uh, face now this is what is is and you can take a picture of that I think this is the whole grail of the whole rejuvenation so we want to slowly slowly by our fat grafting procedure to reverse the signs of aging it's not about giving a puffiness to the face it's not about and uh, you know, giving fat and uh, structural fat grafting. It's about reversing the signs of aging. It's about bringing back youth slowly, slowly by injecting this. And obviously there are different kinds of injection techniques uh, that we have pioneered and this have been published in our uh, you know, uh, journal um, articles. Now this is a beautiful operation I did in Argentina. This is one of the uh, 55 live surgeries that I have performed around the world. And you can see how the patient looks before. And this is a step by step how I'm doing it. You, you know, I'm injecting three ml of milli, one ml of microfat subcutaneously about the SMAS, one ml microfat again in order to recreate. You have to study the patient and you have to exactly decide where you have to inject that. You can see. This is the little triangle that I always like to treat it. Uh, 0.3 microfat subcutaneously, one ml superperiosteally. So I go back and check in order to correct an acolabial fold. I inject superperiosteally three ml for the, the chin um, and obviously four to five ml millifat superperiosteally to recreate uh, the whole jawline two milli uh, uh, nanofat. These are going to be all shown. You can see the pre-op and the post-op. One side is done, the other side is not done. Uh, beautiful results, not exaggerating. And this we are going to teach step by step uh, in cadaver so, uh, workshop. And I think that's that's very important. Now I'm doing the uh, uh, liposuction also of the neck and you're going to see the renewal application because I think this is really, really important when the patient doesn't want to do a full face lifting. There are 
uh, you know, there was a very nice um, uh, workshop and uh, actually live surgery in uh, IMCAS in Paris now. And Beatrice, my wife, and uh, Sebastian Gasol were attending some of the best plastic surgeons, uh, facial plastic surgeons were there. So Beatrice presented this case with the Renewian, and everybody was like, wow, your results are amazing. And uh, we said yes, because there are some cases that they don't want to do the full face lifting. And I know in Asia, there are many people that they are not going to go under the knife for the full face lifting. So we can apply all this procedure and it's nice for you to learn and acquire all this knowledge and deliver to your patient instead of uh, uh, doing the full face lifting. Now, another new thing that we have applied and we are pioneers also is the facial exosomes. Um, I've been applying in the last uh, almost two years uh, in my clinic. So you can see we are mixing uh, the exosomes. They are ready for uh, uh, applying. Usually you can use it either by roller or um, by RF, micro needling. I prefer the roller. So I have done all my face lifting. I have done all the uh, fat grafting and I, I, I put on the roller, the exosomes and I delivered to the patient um, because we have found that uh, it increases the um, scarring level. I mean, it, it gets much better, the, the, whole, the whole healing. And we have amazing results for rejuvenation. So a combination of the stromalus lipograph together with exosomes has produced amazing results for these uh, patients. And this is how the patient looks before and after. And some um, cases, I'm going to go very fast. This is uh, from the UK patients, he had three previous face lifting, and you can see applying all these procedures that I just told you, we're getting amazing results uh, just in one session. Another patient, a 63-year-old patient, you can see how she looked before and after. These are applying all these procedures. Obviously, the patient, uh, she feels much better. She wants to make up, to go and dye her hair. But this is the structural changes that you can see applying the uh, deep face lifting and uh, together with the uh, summary lipograph, they are amazing. Patient, uh, three, three days after the surgery, I mean, this is the amazing thing, how the patient looks. She had two previous face liftings and obviously uh, the result talks by itself. Another patient uh, before and after, another patient before and after, you can see how we manage without uh, you know, doing a major operation to have a beautiful uh, a rejuvenation of the whole uh, face. Male patients, very difficult to treat. This is uh, uh, before and after. See, he had the previous face lifting. You can see the scar on the lower part of the, uh, the earlobe. Uh, we submitted him on, on, uh, on all these procedures you saw. I used the magic technologies. You can see how we managed. They had done a previous face lifting, but look how nicely we got him done by applying all this procedure. This is a fellow plastic surgeon from Athens, Greece. Uh, she had the previous phase lifting, she was not happy. So we went in, we blended, and this is the final result after six and a half months, actually. Patients, again, you know, this is uh, a nice results. And let me just concentrate a little bit for the non-plastic surgeons. These are only applying, you know, fat grafting and emerging technologies, Renewian. You can see this is a before and after, just by that, I didn't do any deep face lifting. Same here, before and after, just applying that. Before and after, this, this was a patient that she had an upper and lower blepharoplasty somewhere else. So she came and we corrected by doing fat grafting. So you see how nicer and younger the patient looks before and after. Another case, before and after. Again, all these are what summarizes what the stromalus lipograph together with emerging technologies can do for this kind of patients. This is only one day after the uh, operation, fat grafting and stromalus lipograft. Obviously, this is the technique we're using. And uh, again, another case, upper and lower blepharoplasty, fat grafting only in renewing technology. You can see how the whole face has really changed the structure by applying all these principles. Obviously, there are cases that we fat grafting can do miracles um, for the nose jobs. You didn't want to have a proper operation, but we just did the fat grafting. And obviously here, a botched nose, three operations before, and we managed to correct it just with fat grafting. So fat grafting goes beyond only fat rejuvenation, but 
can give a very good structure and nose repair in these spaces. Let's go uh, for the composite breast uh, uh, augmentation. Uh, this is what we're doing for the breast. Liposuction obviously makes part. I do Renuvian for scarless breast lift. This is another procedure that we're going to show you in the cadaver shop. It's, it's a workshop, it's, it's an amazing. Obviously, if I can need to use an implant and to give more support, I will use it. And I do the micro-grafting technique for all this. So we have a five golden rules for that. You have to have a proper case selection. Composite breast augmentation is part of our job. So we can combine an implant and fat grafting. Correction of breast doses if needs by magic technologies like Renewin, or if I need to do the traditional breast lifts, I will do it. And obviously the cell protocol for fat grafting. That's a short video how we are doing the uh, uh, scarless uh, breast lift. And we're gonna show this again in the cadaver shop, uh, workshop in uh, uh, Bangkok. I think this is this is very important for breast doses one and two uh, to give the option to the patient not to have a scar. I think you know in Europe, in Asia, in in many places of the world. They, they, I was I was a week ago in uh, uh, United States in Miami, and I was presenting this. And actually, we won the cut of the Maverick uh, Maverick um, um, you know prize for presenting innovative. Uh, uh, techniques that can change the future of aesthetic plastic surgery. Renato Saltz was there, the ex-president uh, of the American Society of Plastic Surgery of ISAPS, mm -hmm. and he was really, you know, amazed by introducing new techniques that can change, you know, the, the future of aesthetic plastic surgery. And for me, the stromal release lipograft and these techniques have really changed the future and the present, actually, I would say, of aesthetic plastic surgery. You can see we're working up ourselves and we are just uh, applying this whole energy from tiny holes, these holes you, you are not going to be able to see. And that's how we are lifting the breast. Now, once you are done with that, you can do the fat grafting. And obviously, you're going to see now how I'm going to be injecting uh, the fat all over uh, the face. You can see uh, this is a case we did in uh, Korea, in Seoul. I was invited um, as an uh, invited professor back in 2012 in their meeting. And I'm doing, this is the side I'm doing, and you're gonna see uh, on the other side, uh, the um, Korean uh, plastic surgery is gonna inject also in the breast. So we have prepared with this method, the stroma list lipograft. You can see I'm taking my time. And obviously this is gonna be a part also of the workshop that we're gonna do in Bangkok. So I'm gonna show you how to inject layer by layer, step by step, uh, drop by drop in order to increase your survival rates. So fat grafting is not about only how you collect your fat, it's not only how you prepare your fat, but it's only it's all, always how you inject your fat. And you can see a beautiful natural result uh, just by fat grafting. So some cases, these are the cases, unfortunately, we're, um, uh, you know, uh, a center, world center, that we're receiving all, most of the complications of uh, uh, breast augmentations. These are all disastrous results, very difficult results to uh, deal. And um, this is one of it. Seven previous operations, we had to go in, take the implants out, do the fat grafting, do the round block, do the renewion, and give the patient, 27-year-old patient, this beautiful before and after result, because obviously most of the guys they are asking me, you are presenting very difficult results, obviously, because they, you know, if you come on the stage and you present only the best result of yours, uh, everybody has best results. But show me the results that they are difficult to deal. So this is a very difficult case. This is another difficult case. This patient had liposuction in order to reduce the breast size. So they took the fat out. So the patient was not happy because he was looking at a 22-year-old lady with sucking breast. So she came, we did Renewian, we did the stroma release lipograph, we did the fat grafting, and you can see the result. We recreated, with obviously no scars, uh, the result, the, the breast that she had in a better position, but obviously because we lifted the breast uh, before she had uh, the surgery. So this is a case we did in Japan, in uh, Tokyo. The patient had an implant in, we took the implant out, the same time we applied these principles of Renewian and stroma release lipograph, then you can see the result, this is uh, our colleague uh, from Japan, Sandit. This is 
a year after the operation, you can see how natural, nicer the result is uh, compared to the before, uh, you know, high riding implant that she had in. Now, another case, this is a Greek patient. She had a beautiful past. I cannot beat that. Uh, they were by implants, but she decided that she didn't want the implants in. So we took the implants out, we did the fat grafting, and that's how the patient looks after almost a year. Uh, four times operated in Belgium, in Brussels. She was not happy with the result. It was low hanging uh, um, implant. Uh, we didn't touch the implant. We just did fat grafting and a round block together with a Nuvian round block mastopexy. And you can see the final result after uh, uh, two years. I mean, the result of the breast looks nicer, more natural. Uh, primary breast augmentation with fat. This is a straightforward um, uh, procedure before and after. Only fat grafting, 200 ml in, and you can see this is after two and a half years procedure. Now, there are cases that we need to combine all these procedures. So, Renuvion, um, round, blocks, round uh, block mastopexy, breast augmentation, fat grafting. This is only 10 days after the operation. This is a patient from uh, Dubai, United Arab Emirates, and you can see how we managed to give a nice, firm breast results, combining all these techniques. Um, another patient, very nice, these procedures when you have an asymmetry. So one breast is bigger or smaller than the other one. So you can see in this case, the right one was smaller. So we did in, we did fat grafting, and you can see how we symmetrized the, the two breasts between right and left. Now, let us let me walk you through, and I'm going to be finishing with that. This is a brand new, amazing technology uh, with lab culture expanding. Again, we are leading the way in aesthetic plastic surgery, and uh, uh, we are the department that we are always in the innovation. I never stop, and I just said to all my plastic surgeons, my all my staff, you know, let's go. We need to go up to the top. So this is SVF isolation. It goes a little bit above the stroma graft. And you're gonna see why, because our fat grafting results, they're getting close to 100% of fat graft survival. This is the first time in the world that you will get this kind of results, all right? And this is, has been published. It's not because I'm claiming, this has been published in Aesthetic Plastic Surgeon and Aesthetic Surgery Journal. You can look at these results and it's available also in the United Kingdom, in uh, almost 10 um, uh, countries in uh, Europe. So how are we doing that? We're collecting the fat, we're sending it to the lab, they are isolating the SVF, culture expanding, and they're giving us back in two weeks time. So I'm performing another live surgery. This is in Copenhagen, uh, Denmark. So we have collected the fat two weeks before, send it to the lab. We're doing the liposuction, and they're gonna be delivered to our room, the cultural expanding adipose derived stem cells. You're gonna see one of the staff of the clinic, they are gonna break it. Here it is. These are all cultural expanded adipose derived stem cells that we are mixing with the fat that we just did the liposuction of the patient. So you're mixing 50 ml of fat with 10 ml of adipose derived stem cells and obviously passing in 10 ml and 20 ml of syringes that I'm going to be using in order to do the fat grafting to the breast. You can see this is how uh, we're mixing. And here I am injecting 200 ml of fat on this patient. You can see this is just pure fat in injection uh, uh, to, to the breast. The beauty about fat grafting to the breast is that you are building step by step, and you can see one breast is done, the other, I'm, I'm starting to do it. Uh, and you can mold the whole breast. You can see how nicely one breast is done and the other one we are in the process of making. Usually it takes me about 45 minutes to an hour for each breast. And you can see the artistic way that the plastic surgeon needs to have and to build this breast instead of opening and putting an implant in, all right? You, and this is the final result, obviously, in the uh, room. Let me show you some cases. Uh, this is before and after. Um, you know, if, if you want, correct me, 88% of volume retention. This is something unheard. This is amazing for the breast. This is only one session, and this is after a year. All these cases, they have been registered 
and monitored by an independent group of plastic surgeons that they came, they saw, we did the MRIs. This is, again, another case, 106 volume irritation. You're going to say, tell me, how did you get 106? We're getting because the adipose derives themselves, they replicate themselves, and they give more fat volume. And we can get up to 106. Again, this is patients that they are very thin. They have only one chance. Don't get me that you can get these results after five or six procedures. Obviously, you can get it. But the patient is going to pay five times. It's going to be under sedation or general anesthetic or under surgery five times. And obviously, the, the economic status of the patient is going to be completely destroyed because uh, uh, these kind of procedures, they are really expensive. But for these patients that they don't have enough fat, it's only one go. So all these patients I'm presenting, 109 fat graft retention, and you can see before and after, 107. This is before and after. This was a flat-chested black male patient. And you can see how beautiful we created this uh, breast. Again, 107, before and after. All these results, they have been monitored and uh, uh, you know published, obviously. So I will finish with that. I'm not going to go to the body because as um, Eddie said, and I'm, I, I want to stick in my time, um, it's going to be only for face and breast. Obviously, there's going to be another option to, to do the body. We have uh, a huge, um, you know, uh, cases, uh, studies for abdominoplasties, liposuction, lipografting the Botox. But I think we're going to focus on this for the time. Thank you very much. And I'm open for any questions. Thank you, Eddie. Yes. Uh, thank you, Aris, uh, for the release on time, 30 minutes uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Mm, okay. Uh, I think we have five questions on the uh, Q and A. Maybe I can uh, go through. And anyway, for all the participants, do you have any questions? Uh, you can raise your hand. Maybe you want to ask uh, audio wise, or you can uh put it into the uh, Q and A or on the chat room. Okay. So, uh, Aris, uh, can you see on the um, Q&A? I can, see, I can yeah. see the question, so I'm going to be uh, going and asking. Uh, I mean, hi, doctor. Thank you for your presentation. My name is Clinton from Indonesia. I have a question about the anesthesia procedure for fat grafting the fat. Which one do you prefer, doctor, using general anesthesia or tumescent anesthesia? And can you explain about when we think to use general anesthesia or tumescent? Thank you. That's a very good question. Uh, you know, it's it's up to the doctor and obviously to the patient. There are patients that they are going under general anesthetic because I need to combine the face. I can do work on the on the body. Uh, uh, but I personally uh, think that tumescent anesthesia together with some sedation is the way to go. I mean, most of our patients, 90%, they are having this kind of procedure. Now, if the patient wants to have a general anesthesia, if there's a bigger procedure, long-lasting procedure, I mean, tomorrow oh, I'll, I'll have a procedure that is going to be done, the face, uh, breast, and buttock uh, work at the same time. So obviously, this patient is going to be about six, six and a half hours on the table. There are going to be three uh, teams working, taking fat out, processing, doing uh, the other procedure. So in that case, I'll put my patient on general anesthesia. Now, if there's a small procedure to get some fat injected to the uh, face, I'll, I'll do a little bit of sedation. And at the same time, uh, I'll do the tumors and uh, anesthesia. So I think it depends uh, on how it goes. Definitely, you need tumors and anesthesia for your fat grafting procedure. So a dry technique. So in other words, getting in without any anesthesia, uh, patient is under GA or sedation doing the fat grafting, uh, the liposuction and fat grafting. I don't think it's a, a it's the way to go. So um, I think I, I hope I answered your question. Let me go. Uh, how long the fat grafting will be last? Should we do some touch up for the patient? Thank you. Uh, uh, you know, the procedure of stromal is lipografting, the way we're preparing the fat uh, grafting, usually uh, it's it's forever. But the problem is that you have to know that aging goes ahead. So even if I do a procedure today, uh, five years later, six years later, the patient will lose some fat, not the fat we are going to transplant, but the, because of the aging. So if you take a photo of yourself like uh, 10 years ago and today, you're going to see that it's going to be uh, a difference between the fat grafting uh, uh, between uh, 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 now and after. So this is very important to know that uh, fat grafting lasts, but when you are doing this kind of procedure, preparing your fat, 
if you do the old technique, centrifugation, your fat is not going to last. It's going to be for less than a year. Now, if you do this procedure of modern fat grafting using all these techniques that I show you, it's going to last. But obviously, the uh, 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 aging, it's going to need a repeat procedure. I say to my patients, in five years, six years, 10 years, depending on each patient, it's not for all the patients the same, you may need to come back and do another session. Uh, can we do the fat grafting without open the skin or any facelift procedure? How long? Yes. Excellent question. Again, yes, you can do. I showed you some cases. You can do the fat grafting. And this work, well, we are going to show also in the cadaver workshop in Bangkok. So without opening the skin, we're going to show you the approaches, different kind of approaches, different kind of fat products, how we're going to put it, where we're going to put it. I'll, I'll, I'll get your hand and I'll teach you exactly how to do it. And then obviously you're going to see by yourself what you have done, because that's the beauty about the cadaver workshop. The, uh, you know, the patient obviously is not going to feel anything and you're going to see exactly what you have done. The different kind of products, of fat products, the multiplication products and the emerging technologies that we're going to be using. I think it's very important for people that they are not in the plastic surgery section, they are in dermatology, aesthetic medicine. Uh, it's going to be beautiful to show you the way to do all this uh, procedure. Uh, can we do another procedure like laser sublative after the procedure immediately? Absolutely. Now, let me tell you something. Um, you can do your fat crafting procedure. You can finish with that. You can do your lasers. And then I usually, I have my dermatologist or my staff to do the lasers and we apply exosomes on the top of that. We have found that exosomes help beautifully the healing uh, procedure after uh, laser. So yes, you can do, you can combine and I think, you know, all these emerging technologies, lasers, uh, you know, radio frequency um, uh, products uh, together with helium plasma um, uh, radio frequency products and together with uh, uh, all this uh, amazing procedure we're doing with the stromalis lipograph, it can be blended. It's an armamentarium that you can combine all of it to deliver this kind of uh, uh, results. Uh, fat grafting for the breast, uh, how long? If the person continues chest exercise, yes. Uh, so the, the fat grafting for the breast, I showed you, there are two procedures. I mean, you can do the adipose derived stem cell expanded, the lab culture expanded. This is forever. Again, but aging is part of the procedure. So as you age, if you lose weight, if you gain weight, this, this fat is, is treated like that. So it's, it's going to go up and down, okay? So if you lose 10 kilos, your breast is going to be, uh, 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 you know, smaller. If you gain 10 kilos, your breast is going to be bigger. So your fat continues to be like that. Exercise after a month. So once you have done this procedure, I always say to my patient for a month, you don't exercise. After a month, you can uh, uh, do, do uh, uh, your exercise, okay? So let me see what else. In your hand, how much of the fat graft resorption? Uh, usually for the face, uh, we have about uh, 15 to 20% of fat graft resorption. For the breast, we have about 30, 35%. This is the average, I think. So we are, to my patient, when it comes, I say, I can guarantee I can give you an 80%, 75, 80% for the uh, face and about 60, 65% for the breast. Now, when you lab culture the cells in, um, um, uh, in the laboratory, I can get you up to 100%. The problem with that is why don't we do it for every patient? It's very expensive. So once I send the adipose derived stem cells to be lab cultured, uh, you have to pay money. It's, it's a quite significant amount. It's about 15,000 euros, uh, which obviously it's, it's going back to the patient, right? For the final procedure. Um, how much it reduced the formation of oil cyst and classification? Marco Fario Cohea, this is a very good friend of mine from Singapore, and I hope I can see him uh, very soon. A great surgeon. He's doing a lot of, uh, uh, you know, endoscopic uh, uh, procedures. I love his procedure. Marco, uh, the oil cysts, they are really reduced. By this procedure, uh, we're following with ultrasound and MRIs, and the, the uh, oil cyst is close to zero. And the reason is not because we are having a better fat graft survival because it's because of the technique. So we're doing the drop, drop technique. If you go and put a, a bolus injection, uh, obviously this is gonna be a bigger chance 
of oil system calcification because people in the, in the beginning they thought by just doing a bolus injection 5 10 ml on the same spot it's going to be better no this is the worst because obviously there's not going to be enough um uh you know blood circulation there to go and for the fat to survive let me just explain you some basic stuff so if when we are injecting it takes about 96 hours for the nutrients for the blood circulations to reach what we have injected now if we uh, have the adipose derived stem cells this can withstand this 96 hours if it's only fat and you have not enriched it with adipose derived stem cells this in 48 hours they're going to die so dying the um, fat cells they are going to be phagocytes by macrophages and this is what we are going to have the oil cysts we're going to have the necrosis and then obviously people they're going to be like <coughs> when they're using an ultrasound to check on that they are going to need to aspirate this oil cyst i had a patient that she was injected back in the united states in boston actually with 500 ml of fat in the breast the breast was looking very nice. When she came and she had the procedure uh, with the radiologist, we found that out of this 80%, because it was because of oil cysts. So we needed to go needle aspiration, all the oil cysts in order to be able to create the last and final result. The patient lost almost about 70% of the volume. So the volume was because of the oil cyst. It wasn't because of fat grafting. So whenever someone says about fat grafting, just go test with your ultrasound and find out. So my patients always get MRIs and ultrasound testing after a year of the procedure. If I see that there is any oil cyst, I go and I just aspirate. But Applying this procedure with stromal release lipograft and the culture expanded, we have really um, close to zero uh, oil cysts. Let me see what else. Uh, let me see, because there are coming more questions. Uh, okay, let me go. So how much it reduced the formation? We just answered that. Is there any adverse event that we should be aware of? Because there's a hot news in Indonesia that a woman died after liposuction. She did the liposuction after six months of giving birth. How about this procedure? Uh, listen, uh, I usually, you know, liposuction is, is, is a procedure like any procedure. It carries risk. It carries, uh, carries adverse reactions. Uh, there is, um, you know, pulmonary emb embolism is a recognized complication after liposuction. Uh, when you're doing fat grafting, uh, there was big news in, in the United States um, uh, when they were doing BBLs, uh, the Brazilian Batocliff, injecting in the muscles, there were a high risk, one in 3,000 of uh, death because of the pulmonary embolism. Uh, now it has been, you know, the task force, they changed completely that, so we're doing, and we are allowed, you know, almost every part in the world just to do life for grafting in the buttocks only in the subcutaneous level. But still, you have to advise the patient in the concerned form that complications are there, they can arise. The surgeon needs to be very experienced in order to recognize the signs of this and obviously do whatever, whatever needs to be done. You know, fat graft um, carries a big risk of especially in the face, uh, uh, if, you, if you don't know how to do it, if you don't aspirate, and this is the beauty about the cadaver workshops, we're going to show you the step-by-step -step how to do it in order to avoid skin necrosis. I have seen a lot of cases in uh, Asia uh, by people that they are not specialists, they have not properly been trained to cause um, deep uh, necrosis of the nose uh, nasolabial or nasozugal uh, necrosis because of intravascular injection of fat. So this is very important. The other thing is blindness. Uh, there are cases reported of fat grafting and blindness connected because obviously the fat graft, when it goes through, it can cause uh, uh, permanent blindness. So all these things that's why I love the cadaver workshops, because we are going to be walking you through and teaching you how not only to do it, 
but how to avoid the complications. I call it pitfalls and pearls of a procedure. So what to do and what not to do. All right, let's go to the next one. Um, compare the nanofat and exosome microneedling. Very good question. Um, you know, the nanofat is not fat. Let, let's say that. They are fatty acids and adipose derives themselves. It's, it's a beautiful product uh, I've been using for the last almost seven, eight years. Um, the results are really good because you're seeing a very good uh, you know, uh, effect on the skin. Exosome is a completely new thing. It's, it's the last two, two and a half years. Um, exosomes, they are micro vesicles that basically waking up your cells. So they are messengers that they say, hello guys, let's work. Let's wake up and do the job. That's how I can simply compare the two things. So there are two completely different ways of approaching skin rejuvenation and tissue rejuvenation. So to my understanding, I need whatever I have in my armamentarium to use that. So there are cases that I will combine depending on the indication, the nanofat with exosomes. There are cases I'm gonna use only nanofat and they're obviously only exosomes. Now, if I'm in the office and the patient doesn't want to go through a procedure of fat grafting, you know, preparing the nanofat, I'll use the exosomes. Now, if I'm in the operating theater and depending on the case, I may combine both of them, I may use only one of them. So, you know, just, um, you know, uh, see the indication and obviously decide what's the best, obviously discussion with your patient uh, for your patient. Um, <clears throat> About cell adipose culture, how long does it take from ha harvesting to injecting? Very nice. It takes two weeks. Uh, we have usually, we're getting about 25 billion adipose derived stem cells. Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, we have a 3D bio scaffold that it's property of, uh, you know, our, our department. It was usually taken two to three months. And this is what most of the patients, they were not happy to wait that long. So now with the two week, um, uh, you know, uh, distance, we're taking the fat card vesting, analyzing, um, isolating the SVF, culture expanding, and it's ready to the operator there to do. And in the case of skinny patients who want to feel volume on the face or breast, from which part of the body we can take the fat grafting? You know, for a skinny patient, I'll use any place. So, you know, this skinny patient I did in Copenhagen, I used the arms. I use the tummy, I use the back, I use the thighs. You know, I'll, I'll get whatever fat I have. And this patient actually uh, in Copenhagen, I did also for uh, the face. She was a young patient, but she wanted a little bit more of volume. So I culture expanded the cells and mixed it for the breast and for the face. So you can do that when you have this kind of uh, uh, procedures, you can combine it. And it's very important, as you said, and I pointed out for the skinny patient, because the skinny patients, they have one you know, chance. Once you deplete the whole fat, what are you gonna say? Just go and put another 15, 20, 30 kilos in order to uh, suck it out again? Now, most of the people, they are not gonna do it. So they're gonna go for uh, implant, they're gonna go for other procedures. Okay, let's ask because there are more questions coming. How to plan the volume of fat should be taken and the prepare fat for grafting? Uh, a great question, you know, I mean, you sit down with your patient, you uh, decide where exactly to take the fat, what are the areas that she's really bothered, and obviously you administer uh, where you should put it. So there are patients coming to me and they're saying, you know, we want a little bit more of fat, we want a little bit less of fat in the breast, in the face. So we decide what's the plan, so how much we need. And then obviously we sit with the patient uh, and do the, the procedure. I usually, I mean, today in the morning, I had a case that I did fat grafting only. She didn't want any other procedures. So I did the liposuction. I did fat to the face, a little bit for the decolite. So she wanted only in the upper part, inner part of the uh, breast. And at the same time, a little bit on the buttocks. So I just, you know, concentrated, took the fat I wanted, prepared with the stromal rich lipograph technique, the protocol I showed you, you know, my nurses, uh, the two nurses just prepared it. And once it was ready, we just injected. The whole procedure took about one and a half hour and the patient walks out. So she's going to go home today. I think the beauty about this procedure is that we are structurally fat grafting 
the face, the breast, and the, bo the body, obviously the buttocks. And at the same time, uh, the patient is reversing the signs of aging. As I showed you, the nanofat, the uh, millifat, and uh, the microfat can produce a very nice result for the face, rejuvenate the face. And I think uh, the, the kind of a workshop uh, done, and obviously you're going to be able to come and join us also with this uh, beautiful people that they are in uh, this uh, uh, leaflet that uh, Eddie put it up. Uh, they are going to come uh, and show you the different approaches of fat grafting. I think the fat grafting era is, is, is what's creating all this buzz because it has results. I mean, if you see the patient and you follow them, uh, you're going to see that the results, the results are amazing. So um, uh, let me, there's another question. Whether, was there any difference with other tools in the making of fat graft? Very good question. Uh, Guy Mangalon, who is going to be there and uh, he's going to uh, uh, present in, in this uh, 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 FATS meeting, uh, together with uh, Jeremy Magalon, his son, uh, they did a fantastic study comparing different kinds of products for fat grafting, all right? So T-Lab, um, adenizers, uh, uh, Lipocube, you know, uh, tulip products. They, they compared everything. So they have a beautiful study, and I believe Eddie, uh, he, will, he will present this in this uh, fat meeting. Come and see it. I personally, because I have used all this, uh, uh, tools, I find that uh, LipoCube works to my hands better because I can have predictable results. So I think uh, uh, it's, it's very important to find yourself, try the different tools and decide which way to go. Obviously, I'm doing the enzymatic digestion. Uh, I'm using the ACS, the automatic salt station, like I showed you. I combine it with mechanical. So I get in my armamentarium any possible um, you know, tool that will produce a better result to my patient. Obviously, you can try and you will find out what best works for you. But for my case, I tried to give you uh, a protocol, an outline, how I do the face and breast. Obviously, you know, could be another webinar. Eddie can decide to work and present about the body because I think there are so many new things and so many good applications for the body and fat grafting. And other questions, generally speaking, how many CCML do you use to go for phase rejuvenation generally? Uh, I usually uh, use about 15 to 20 ml per side. So I totally 40, but again, it's merely micro and nanofat. So you have to separate, you have different uh, um, uh, you know, uh, protocols for each phase. So if it's a young phase, you're not gonna pump it up and you're not gonna use all this. So if it's uh, an older uh, patient, I mean, need to use a little bit more of merely structural fat grafting instead of, uh, 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 you know, uh, for, um, you know, structural and uh, rejuvenation fat grafting. So for me, the, the take home message, because I think we're running out of time, is the most important thing. There are more questions coming. Unfortunately, uh, Eddie, uh, we, we will not be able to answer all of this, but I think the uh, fat grafting, uh, don't consider it as a structural fat grafting. So it's not giving volume. The take home message, and I think this is the most important thing, is fat grafting can reverse the signs of aging, especially in the face. So you want to use these different kinds of products in order to bring back the time. It's the pro-aging, the anti-aging properties of fat grafting with products like Mili and Nanofat that can actually reverse the skin aging, reverse the um, aging process in the tissues. And obviously the structural fat grafting can give you volume, but you have to consider it as a whole. So the take home message again, stick to that, is use all these procedures, use uh, the stromal release lipograft, use the different kinds of products that are out there in order to give to your patient the best possible results for your fat grafting. And join us to the Cadaver Workshop because we are going to be discussing two whole days, one day for the face, one day for the breast, all these beautiful procedures, all these different techniques, all these different approaches. You are going to have hands-on experience. So once you have done that, you are going to be ready to give it to your patient back the best possible techniques uh, for the best results.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Aris. I think uh, we have uh, exceeded two minutes of this uh, precious time and also for all the uh, precious times by the participants. Um, again, uh, we are very uh, happy to see a strong participation and also a lot of questions. But anyway, you still can send us the question and we will forward to Aris uh, for his uh, reply. Uh, today, we are also very happy to see a lot of good friends like uh, Dr. Marco, Dr. Lee Kim Sia, uh, Dr. Kamo Watanakran, and of course, uh, Professor Kim Magalon from France uh, also participate in this uh, webinar. Again, uh, as uh, Dr. Aris has uh, stated, uh, whatever he has um, discussed today, uh, it can be uh, clearly demonstrated during uh, the uh, cadaver workshop as a host in uh, Bangkok by the prestigious uh, University of Chula Long Kong on the 1st and the 2nd of uh, July, 2024. And uh, prior to that, we have a three days uh, conference uh, where uh, Dr. Aris and his, uh, as you can see on my screen, a uh, panels of uh, international uh, faculty to present their work. All right, so let me see. So with that, uh, is there any um, parting words from you, Aris? I mean, thank you very much for the opportunity. It's a great pleasure to be part of it in Asia. And, and I would like to thank uh, Professor Guy Magalon, uh, Jeremy Rai, and all, you know, all the friends and uh, uh, colleagues that they are going to be there, uh, Norbert Palua, uh, and, you know, Sophie Menkes. We are going to try to give you the best of the fat grafting, um, you know, science, the best of the fat grafting principles that we have. You know, all these guys that you present there, uh, Guy, um, is, they are the, the past, the present, and the future of fat grafting. So if you are interested in fat grafting, if you are interested in applying all these techniques for the face, breast, and, and body, please join us. And uh, it's not only about theory and lectures, it's about practice. So you are going to be with us in the Calibre Workshop in order to try by yourself and uh, learn all these technologies. Again, thank you very much for your time. It's, it's, it's an amazing uh, uh, you know, opportunity and looking forward to see all of you personally not virtually in Bangkok. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, Fat. Thank you, Aris, and thank you to all participants. Uh, we will uh, thank you very much again, to Aris. I know you're a busy guy, you know, and asking you to share this webinar over the Sunday for yourself, I think, is uh, too much for me to ask. I, I just, I just need to go back and check on the patient now because <laughs> uh, you know that they, they, they operated. So, uh, yeah. thank you very much once again. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Thank you bye very bye. much, Aris. Thank you very much. Appreciate. Bye bye. Bye bye, guys.